Hi guys and welcome to another review. This time around I bring you the latest from Rose Techniques. Uh, it's a brand that I will be shortly bringing quite a few reviews uh, of their products to you guys. Um, I've already done so in the past with the uh, QT9 MK2 and the QT7 Pro, but I will be reviewing now the latest QTX, the QT9 MK3. I'm reviewing now the Quiet C and I will also, also be reviewing their uh, TWS's two models that they have. Anyway, this is the Quiet C. This is a collaboration between uh, Rose Techniques and Ico. And uh, in a few seconds, I'll show you, or in a few minutes rather, I'll show you a, a curious um, thing. Anyway, this is the box that it brings. We'll remove the sleeve here. Okay, that's it. And, oops, other way around. There we go. There we go. Apologies. Uh, open it up and it, uh, we greet it with this uh, little paper uh, diagram of the actual uh, driver and showing how everything is broken down. Quite nice. Uh, I mean, interesting. Uh, you know, really nice. Actually, I was I was had it, had, it, had it the other way around. This is actually the correct manner. Pretty nice. Um, over here, we bring a carrying case, which I'll show to you in a second. Okay, it brings this uh, manual of how to install or how to fit the the uh, earphones and it's all in uh, in Chinese so uh, unfortunately it's a pity um, it's um, there we go I am scam over there okay get this out of the way here and let me just show you now the IM this is the actual carrying case Rose Technics logo there brings some tips white boards brings a cable removal tool because it's got an MMCX cable. It's available in 3.5 and 4.4 termination. Uh, one second. There we go. This is the cable. Really nice cable. Looks like um, uh, some of the cables that we've seen from Nice HTK and also IVPIQ and XINHS have got some cables which are very similar to this. All right. Very, very similar, but mainly uh, nice HTK has some cables which are similar to this. And then the IM itself. And those that are a little bit more uh, aware of what is around and so on and so forth, they will look at this and straight away recognize this as a, a shell which is very reminiscent of an IM that we had from ICO. And one second, I'll go fetch it. Here we go. It doesn't want to come out of the box. Here we go. This is the ICO that I was talking about. Okay, let me pick up both the right sides. Okay, and this is the one with um, uh, now Rose Techniques. The size is almost identical with the faceplate. I would say that the faceplate of the uh, newer model of the Quiet C is just slightly bigger. But it could be main. It could be just a color thing, okay? Uh, and then it's just the thickness of one and the other which changes, okay? Because this is like a three-part shell. All right. Um, this used an eight millimeter CNT, the Ico. This uses a ten millimeter, uh, and I'm not sure what is the diaphragm material. All I know is that it's an in-house designed um, driver, dual chamber, and it's using uh, a proprietary um, diaphragm uh, they didn't really disclose uh, it's got like I mentioned the MMCX connector it's got the oval uh, shaped tips and nozzle uh, fit is perfect it's, it's, a, it's a relatively small IM and fits really nicely it didn't have any issues with the fit it's got a nice long nozzle so I'm able to insert it deep uh, with these uh, stock no um, tips, it works fine. I've tried the KB ears, the the, the BGVPs. I tried uh, I, I tried a few tips. Trust me, um, uh, some uh, uh, final E tips as well. I tried the new Tangzu tips. Uh, with these tips, it works fine. And the differences that I had that I did encounter between them were so minimal that honestly didn't even um, it's not even worthwhile. Uh, you, um, safe to say that if for some reason these tips don't fit all the others sonically at least will bring you basically the same results and if those other fits fit so those other tips fit you better then go for the other ones anyway um, in terms of hardware it's got a nice solid construction you know it's, it's perfect um, this the, the 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 units are well the, the quiet C is available either directly from from uh, uh, Rose Techniques which directly from them the price is uh, around the $70 
uh, price, price, uh, pr uh, pr uh, price tag, and if you buy it uh, on Hi-Fi Go, um, you can get it for around 55, 50 to 55 dollars. That's the price. Um, on the Rose Techniques uh, website, they usually do give you still a discount. So ultimately, the price will basically be around, which it will be around the same thing, which is roughly around the 50 dollar price bracket. And uh, be it both the um, Rose Techniques, the Quiet Sea. Or be it this other IEM that I have here, which is the Muse Hi-Fi, uh, the East 6. These two IEMs are entering uh, a, a price bracket or, 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 a, or a segment of the market which is um, highly, highly competitive, which is the, the, the price bracket of below $100. Um, most of the IEMs that I have in front here, and I'll, I'll give you a quick overview now in a second, most of these IEMs, uh, are priced mainly between forty and eighty dollars, but there are two which fall out of that price bracket. One is the the, the tension one, which is around twenty twenty four twenty five dollars, and the other one is the the Duno Kime Classic up there, which is about a hundred dollars. So these two are the only ones that really are at the extremes of this let's say range or or this this price cap of a hundred dollars. The rest are forty fifty sixty seventy dollars. They all go around there, and these two IEMs, like I was saying. They fall in within this this category of prices, which is very. I mean, it's it's cutthroat, honestly. Uh, and you know, for you to succeed in this in this uh, in this price uh, bracket, you have to have uh, you have to have a standout feature because you know there's just so much that you can do. That's the reality. There's just so much a tuning will take you, um, and and you know the differences ultimately are not going to be very big. So you have to have something which is. Uh, let's say a calling card and definitely I mean I have to give it to them in terms of the cable it's perfect tips would have been nice to have a few more tips but the reality is that these tips they work fine you know they've also included a little uh, removing removing tool for the cable which is again a nice touch so I would say in terms of accessories overall I give it a thumbs up because you know nice cable no need to go spend money on an on a, on a better cable De decent enough tips uh, removal tool for the for the for the IEM carrying case. It, they've they've checked the the boxes in my opinion, which is not the case sometimes with many other IEMs in this price bracket. They either focus too much on the IEM itself, but then the accessories are lacking, or then they give too many accessories, and the IEM has a sound which is a little bit, uh, you know. So it's it's difficult to find a good compromise between the two aspects. What do I have here? On the top there, I've got the Duno Kima Classic around a hundred dollars. Um, you know. Uh, it was the updated version of the um, of the Duno Kima, and I am that um, um, either one really did nothing wrong and did nothing that stood made it, made it stand out. That's the reality. Let's let's be honest about it. It's a nice sounding I am. It's solid. It's got a good solid sound, but it doesn't have enough to perhaps justify its price or justify going for it as opposed to other things which are equally available. Okay. Um, next to that, I've got the SimGot EA500. I think, uh, um, I mean, n n I don't really need to, to go on here and say too much about it because we, we already know, uh, you know, uh, what, 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 the, um, what the EA500 has been, not only for SimGot, but has been for the market. Um, they have been able to, to um, uh, give us an IEM, which in my opinion, is a mini version of the oxygen and in many aspects even perhaps better than the tantrum oxygen and those that know me know that if i'm saying that and and being a big fan of the oxygen i've got three units it means a lot it means that that there is a special IEM. it's got the you know detachable nozzles uh, it was by some criticized for being a little bit too bright and so on. oh i think personally maybe it's because i'm going deaf i mean i don't hear past 15k i think it's fine it's perfect the balance they've struck especially with the with the um with the red nozzle on it, it's 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 for me perfect for my music for my ears perfect fit is amazing nothing to be said next to that the zula Nial, the z4 that was a, a more recent uh, release um another i am that shares or that has these detachable nozzles which have now become the rage beautiful construction also has a dlc driver this is a dlc that's a dlc driver that's also a dlc driver so the drivers in any one of these iams are of good quality that's without a doubt that's that's uh, it's it goes without saying um the the nozzles here that, that they've uh, implemented they because 
the base that has been purposely made a little bit more on the shy side, uh, you have to choose the nozzles carefully, otherwise it will just be too too excessively energetic in the mids up, mids and treble, uh, and then even showcase more the thinness of the base. Or then, you know, you choose the the nozzle which is the one I've got on there, which I believe is the silver one, if I'm not mis mistaken. Um, that you know, that's got the perfect balance, and it 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 sounds really good. Having said that, it's not as bassy as the two previous ones. It's the more mid-range focused, okay? Next to that, uh, the R2 E3 uh, Mermaid. Um, again, detachable nozzles. Again, it has, like, actually, the the um, the Z4A, a, a, a different system in terms of the tuning, which you can see here on the on the Mermaid, that, that huge vent there. What they've basically done on, on these two is they take the advantage of the rear wave that the driver generates when it's working, and it they, they vent it out to the front in a in a smart manner to then um, do away with uh, any resonance peaks that might occur and try and make the sound smoother and do away with those peaks as well. The the Mermaid uses a brilliant driver, and again, uh, if you're not careful with the nozzles that you use, it's not going to be uh, the 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 most uh, at least for me the most pleasant sounding I am. But luckily, the the nozzle that I have got there. It's perfect, and when I show you the graphs in a while, you'll understand what I'm saying. It's perfect, nothing issues, no issues there. XSLX1, um, amazing driver inside. It's a driver of the MIM Dark Magician. In the initial um, version, it was too bass heavy, so it just made everything that dark. This is the Mark II version, which they brought down the bass by about 4 dBs. Much better, but I still think that there's room for improvement, and that day, if it is improved further, can become an absolute beast. Um, Next to that, uh, Blonde Z300, the HV collab. Oops, sorry, it's not, it's not focusing. Not there. We go. The Blonde Z300 uh, on the top there, on the right there. Okay, there we go. Um, I've got it here because it's an IEM that was was well uh, was well received. It's an IEM that represents well HBB's uh, type of sound, and you know, by having it here, we can position better the the. Um, the Quiet Sea and the uh, the, the, the the Mermaid, uh, sorry, the Mermaid, the Muse, the, the, the East Six, although this is a, a part two in the review. This is just, for this review now we'll be focusing on this. Okay, uh, on the bottom here, yeah, uh, Wizard HE10 CNT driver, very much this sound similar to the SIM got and overalls of how it comes across. The same thing like the EPZ, the Q5. These three actually share a very similar sound. When I lay the graphs on top of each other, you will see that they only differ in the bass and how the bass is done, but the rest is almost identical. Then, yeah, the other outlier, which uh, some might be questioning, why did I put a $20 yeah, I am and comparing it to uh, an IM which costs anywhere between $50 and $70? Well, because it deserves it. Uh, it is a very well-tuned IM and probably the best-sounding tan stream to have come out in a long, long time. Um, Next to that, the uh, ICO OH300, uh, ICO's uh, take on a single DD, uh, and it is to a certain extent, you could say a mini OH10, um, or OH10S, um, of course not as polished, but it's got that same DNA, nice base, it's clean, it's got plenty of detail, way more detail than what the graph would lead you to believe, and just it's, it's, a, it's a fun, fun sounding IM, might not be the most technically proficient, but fun sounding it is. Next to that, the Jazir Clear, uh, one of the most fun IEMs under this uh, and in this price range of around fifty dollars, an absolute beast in terms of the bass. Once again, of course, by having this much bass, you don't have the technicalities that you would expect. But this is not for the technically inclined. This is inclined. This is one is for the bass heads and a proper done bass head IEM. I mean, this thing for me in terms of bass is as good, if not better, than the Legato. Okay, uh, and next to that, the TKZK Oranos, a long time favorite of mine. An IEM that uh, went very much under the radar. CNT driver as well, actually, funny enough. Uh, that's CNT, this is LCP, LCP, I'm not sure about this one, not sure about this one. That's CNT, DLC, 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 beryllium. Uh, not sure about that one, not sure about that one. That's, I believe it's a silicon uh, silicon driver on the on the blonde. Uh, so, the, the CNT driver that's been used here on, on the, uh, on the uh, Oranos gives it a sound, um, uh, which is... Um, very balanced. It kind of has some touches of the blonde, but with more detail, a little bit better detail up top as compared to the blonde. Anyway, um, let's get straight into this and not make this review last uh, an hour. Uh, Quiet C. Um, 
as I've said, in terms of the build, perfect. In terms of the accessories, perfect. Sound wise, um, it's got a a sound which is very reminiscent, but very reminiscent of the sound that you get on the Mermaid, and uh, of the sound uh, that you get, uh, well. On the mermaid, okay. I'll focus mainly on the mermaid. It's got a sound that's very reminiscent to that. What does that mean? It means it's got the nice bass, way way nicer than what the graph would need you believe, because there's a slight roll off, but it's it's really engaging. It's full. It's got a nice mid bass slam. It is unquestionably, uh, you know, the, the unquestionable. Sorry, the quality of the bass is is definitely there. They, they, it's it's not even a. Is it good? Is it not good? It's not only in terms of quantity, but in terms of quality. And then it's got the pin again just that initially peaks at just over 2K, and then it dips a little bit, then it peaks up again, and then it dips. So it's a little bit of a roller coaster, but somehow the way that they've come together, and that's the, the way that everything just then you know blends, is actually quite satisfying and much more uh, gratifying even than, for example, the way that the mermaid comes across with the other nozzle that it has. With the other nozzle which boosts the mids and the highs, that there becomes uh, way, way, way too unbalanced. It's just too energetic for me personally. Uh, that's the reason why I'm using this, uh, this second nozzle. Um, and this is kind of the in-between the two nozzles of that. Let's put it that way. Which means that then you have a little bit extra energy as compared to the to the mermaid. So it's got a little bit more mids, a little bit more upper mids, a little bit more more treble, but it never reaches the level of that one with, when the, the the other optional nozzle is used, where everything is just pushed to to level ten. Uh, so it means that this will then scale very nicely. Uh, a few songs, obviously, you sh you sh you can see that. Uh, things are on the limit in terms of when you stop pushing the volume. Uh, La Belle Dance and Remorse from Chris Botti is one, one, th one, one song that you know, showcases that very well, or Up and Up from Jeff Ryan. You know, the sax there uh, and all the trumpet, um, it, it can get very, very potent. And, and you know, it, it's a, those are two songs that I use to kind of establish um, how smooth an I am can be. Um, Obviously, it's always very relative. Some some might actually like some of you might actually like that energy that it has. But for example, it's on from George Duke. The bass, the 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 the, the drums, perfect. The cymbals, perfect. Um, another one here that I can uh, uh, sunrise from Larry Carlton, amazing. I mean, the Quiet Sea does it spotlessly. Uh, well, I mean, no, no complaints again. Uh, let me see another you know, piece of me from uh, from Candace Springs. Very nice vocal, female vocal. It's got the, the, the it's got the correct amount of energy to give her voice and to give the whole song its engagement. Elephant from Carol Dubok, very very nice. It does it really well. The Quiet Sea plays uh, Elephant really really well. Uh, it is it is. Let me just mention that I used for the majority of the of the listening. I used. The topping A50 with the M15, and I also used my my topping NX7 with the with the uh, KN. Uh, in either one, I liked it. Um, it. It's I would say it's it's very much 50/50. I like the warmness that this gives, which tames the upper mids and treble a little bit, but I like as well the detail that the M15 with the A50 gives. It, it's it's um, it's a nice both of them are very nice combinations. So I'm not really going to say that this prefers one combination or the other. I'm going to say it's it will ultimately be dependent on you. Okay, it matches either sort of combination well. A combination which is more on the warmer side or a combination that's a little bit more on the detailed side. It it can, it, it does both really well. Um, so bass, that's basically done. Male vocals are, in my opinion, well well executed. Female vocals, you know. Um, Again, depending on how energetic you like your the, the vocals, they 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 are well, but there might be some of you that might think they're a little bit too much, perhaps because of those peaks. But uh, personally, I didn't find it uh, to be uh, you know a problem for me. I, I just, I mean, a kiss to build a dream on from from Amber Rubarth, uh, perfect. I mean, uh, or you from Cecil Norby. Actually, the whole of Cecil Norby. This does it flawlessly. It gives it gives the right energy. It gives the right atmosphere that you 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 want to have uh, to her voice. You know, it 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 really does it really well. I mean, uh, analog from Soul Persona, which is a little bit more, and Presence Fraser, which is a little bit more um, up tempo. Again, it 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 always it kind of there isn't really a genre of music that I would say that this shines. 
<coughs> one way that doesn't do as well. I think it's in, in because I've got a relatively varied playlist. I just don't listen to a lot of rock. Uh, with my music, it did everything the way I like it. I really can't complain. I really, truly cannot complain. Uh, Bruno Miller, um, the eighties. The guitar is is phenomenal, phenomenal. It's, I mean, it's really, really good. Um, so bass is good, mids are good, treble, the extension that it has more than matches the, the rest. There is one or two occasions where it may be just a touch sibilant, uh, you know, like the answers remorse from Chris Potty is one of those times. But I mean, nothing again that I would say is a, is a deal breaker or, or that I couldn't deal with or that I just didn't turn the volume down a little bit. It doesn't need a lot of power, mind you, actually. It, uh, it does well with, with, with just the dongles by itself, although, I, like I said, I did that combination. Um, and that's basically it in terms of its sound. In terms of technicality, sound stage is really nice, really, really nice. It's big, it's airy, um, wide, uh, good depth. The height, eh, okay, not, but depth and the width is fine. Um, the imaging is very good. You can pinpoint and, you know, very resolving as well. Not, nothing, nothing there as well to, to be said in a negative manner. Uh, detail retrieval perfect as well. So for an IM that it's priced at this uh, for this value, it it basically is ticking the right boxes. It's basically having, like I was saying in the beginning, it's basically having all the right reasons for you to consider it as a solid option to purchase. Okay, as compared now quickly to these um, options that I've selected here, compared to the Dima, um, I mean we have straight away one issue here with the price. I mean if if you get this from from Hi-Fi Go, like I said, this is about fifty dollars. That's a hundred. The, the Kima does not have a $50 extra to offer, not in terms of accessories, maybe a few more tips, but not in terms of cable, not in terms of nothing. Build quality is okay, all metal there, yeah, it's not all, very similar. They both are very, very good. Uh, I Ultimately, I prefer the balance of the Quiet C a little bit more over there than, than on the, the, the Classic. It's, it's just got that little extra grunt on the base, it just makes it... A little bit more satisfying for me although although the reason why when you look graphically you will not see it's that different the reason why that day um, might come across as having a little bit less bass is because it doesn't have just it's got a little bit less mid bass slam but it's got more energy in the mids up mids and treble but you know they are both very equal but if when you start considering price and I would say that this is a, a, a better option okay um, if you have that does it make sense buying this not not really it doesn't I mean you, you, it's, it's not that it's a downgrade but it doesn't make sense compared to the SimGot EA500 that's a simple and easy one to answer SimGot EA500 that's just my personal opinion the SimGot EA500 does everything that this can do better more technicalities across the board the bass is maybe not as slammy as this but it's got plenty of bass to match the rest of the frequency range um, it's just a better I am you know I'm not taking anything away here from the quiet C because it is very competent but the EA500 is a better I am compared to the Zulian ER, very different in terms of the tunings that's significantly thinner in the bass so it will be in more of an option of what you prefer you want a more vocal centric or more balanced if you're looking for more balance definitely this okay so it's not really one is the better one is the worst compared to the the mermaid they are probably the most similar out of all of these ims this is these are the two which share the most common dna here um with the filter that it's got now there it's Trading blows, they're kind of equal. So if you have a mermaid, it doesn't make sense to buy a quiet sea. With the other filter where it's boosted in the mids and the treble, this wins outright because the balance here is way better than there. It's just it's too much. Compared to the X1, the the the, the, the X1, the, the Mark II, uh, the bass there is phenomenal, phenomenal. I mean that like I mentioned, that's the MIM Dark Magician Driver. Phenomenal bass and mids. Uh, it just doesn't have the, the upper mids and treble that this has. So I would say these two are good complements to each other. If you have that, yes, it does make sense to get this, in my opinion. Compared to the, the Blonde, the Z300, the Z300, again, very nice bass. I think the bass here is still better, though. Very nice mids. I still think the mids here are slightly more detailed because of the way that it's been tuned. It's not the fault of the driver or anything. It's just the way that it's been tuned. And this definitely does have more detail up top. So ultimately, ultimately, although that is a super competent IEM, the, the Z300 is very competent, very, very competent. There's nothing wrong with it. I, I feel the Quiet C outdoes the Z300 by just having a little extra touch of detail that the Z300 lacks. That, you know, a little bit more twinklies and sparklies, like I sometimes say. 
um, Compedia to the TKZK Oranos, uh, very evenly matched, although the tuning is different, uh, very evenly matched. So I would actually, this would be a tough one to choose, honestly, a tough one to choose. I like the smoothness of the mids, up mids and treble here. Um, I like the engagement that they have here. Uh, the bass is a little bit more engaging here, but it's smoother over there. It's, it's more, it will be, uh, this is definitely more versatile in terms of genres. That one, not so versatile. But uh, it, it, and, but even in the genres where it's not as versatile, it still plays well. It still comes across well. And, and you know, so it's, this is a tough one. Uh, very evenly matched, these two. Uh, compared to the Jazir, the clear, I mean, it, it, two different uh, complements to each other. That's a base monster, V-shaped, really good for what it is. This is more, this is more competent, okay, overall. So a good, a good complement to each other. OH300, the same situation, although the, the, the difference is less than with the clear. These two end up having more of a closer sound than the, the, the Jazir has. So a good complement to each other. If you have one, make, getting the other makes sense. Um, the the tension the tension uh, makes sense pure and simple because of the price you know that uh, this is an IM that I feel you it must be had yes when you start listening to it then comparing it here yeah, with the with the um, with the quiet C yeah the bass here yeah, is not as it's not as engaging it's not as a, it's not a bass which is as you know hard hitting but it is definitely a, a an IM that must have and definitely a a, a good side grade a good complement they, these two again complement themselves very well um, compared to the sim got uh, sorry, my apologies. Compared to the to the e, um, the EPZ, the Q5, it's uh, kind of very much the same situation as you have with the Simgot. They are very very similar sounding IMs, and actually the same thing with the with the with the Wizard. I mean, what I'm going about to say will apply to, to will apply to these two. Uh, mids, upper mids, treble, very well executed, super detailed, super smooth. There's no there's no there's no real sibilance. There's no real nothing. It's very very good. Um, Coupled to a bass which is more than competent and more than keeps up with the rest of the frequency range. Com when you compare them to the, the Quiet C, a little bit more cleanliness in the mid bass slam uh, here, especially compared to this year. This year is perhaps a little bit more, more soft in its slams. That one there, a little harder hitting. Um, that one there is the, still the most hard hitting out of these three and probably very comparable yet to the Quiet C. Probably very comparable. So, I would say, while the EA500 I say is definitely a better IEM, I would say that these two, although similar to the A500, compared yet to the Quiet C, it would it will be a decision based on mainly what price you can get them for. Uh, if you can get this at the discount price that sometimes it's available, the HE10 makes more sense still. Uh, it's equally as well built, well accessorized, good cable, everything. Um, if you have it, does it make sense buying this? No. This, uh, if you have it, does it make sense buying this? No. But if you can get it at a discount price that sometimes it's available, then definitely yes. Okay. So overall, what can I say about the Quiet C? Very nicely built IM. A really nice, um, uh, you know, take from, from Rose Techniques on, on a single DD. Very competent, in my opinion, better than the previous single DDs that they had offered, which were obviously uh, also a smaller, smaller option, more bullet styled, and, and not, not as not as competent as this. But nevertheless, very competent, well tuned, um, well accessorized. It, it's an IEM that it can trade blows and exceed in performance a lot of these IEMs, but it's more an IEM that is a complement than anything else. It complements the performance of many other IEMs. Yeah, it complements that, uh, it complements this, it complements this, it kind of complements as well the TKZK. Uh, it, it's more of a, of a, of a side-grade IEM than necessarily an IEM that it's outright much better, okay? Uh, so I think, you know, being being a side grade is, a, is an IM that definitely has a place for it. There's a place for it for people that have some of these IMs. Like if you have the Z4, for example, and you want something which is a, a little bit more slammy, a little bit more bass focused, this, this is a solid, solid option. I mean, it, it would make more sense to get this, for example, than to get a, a Q5. Uh, because that's really got loads of, lo loads of detail, you know. So if you want, if you got that, which is plenty detail, great mids, great, and you want something that's got bass, then this is definitely a, um, a, a good, a good alternative or a good option because it does, it might not have the mids and highs as as good as there, uh, but it's got the bass. It, 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 you know, 
the OH300, for example, in that aspect, although I mentioned they are complements and this is also very base heavy, they're, it's too radically different already. Do you, know, you know, too radically different. This would be a, 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 a smarter uh, option. Okay, anyway, guys, this is my take on the, the Quiet C. Definitely worthwhile considering. I'll show you now the graphs and we'll wrap it up. All right, take care. Hi guys and welcome now to the graph section for this uh, this uh, review of the uh, Rose Technics Quiet C and the uh, Muse uh, the East Six. Um, this is the graph of the um, Quiet C. As you can see, um, more let's say a traditional style of graph to, to to what we are used to seeing. It doesn't have that usual no. You know, uh, Harmon curve and so on and so forth, but uh, funny enough, and, and although it has a, a graph style which is more along the lines of what we used to see a few years ago, the truth is that it actually does sound pretty decent, okay? There is a little bit of a bleed into the mids, but the way this bleed is done, coupled to the fact that you have this energy here, I mean everything sits within, let me just start, 66, we have a gain to the base of around 90 Bs, a little bit more for the mids and the highs. Uh, but the way that this um, base is done and is then uh, complemented by the mids and highs here, it actually comes across different. It doesn't sound as uh, as, as significantly V-shaped as, as what you might think. Um, and it's it's got a nice clean sound. Uh, not a detail monster, yes, it's true, not a detail monster. But it's got more than ample details. And, and the base, the way, that I think the main reason uh, is that the quality of the driver is very good and that's what ultimately detects that you being able to get away with having this much bass energy especially in the mid bass and it's still sounding clean because if you ultimately look I mean the mids you know usually by 300 you want to be already kind of on the flattish side let me pick up here for example let me get here the the uh, Duno the Kima Classic where is it the Duno Kima Classic Wizard here we go number 13 for example this is the Duno Kima Classic Okay, uh, let me just change the color here to something a little bit different. So ultimately, the, the rules state that you want a, a, a base which is almost flat by 300 hertz, by 250 to 300 hertz from almost flat, so you don't have any, any bleed or anything of the sort, which is the case of the Duno. Um, so, you know, in terms of the base execution, yeah, you would think it's better executed, more correct. More, more audio file, let's put it that way. Uh, and then, you know, you, you have all this energy in the mids, up mids and travel of the Duno, loads of, 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 of ability to sound stage, very airy, very nice sounding I am unquestionably, but still in the midst of having such a nice graph, there's really nothing that captivates you about the Duno, nothing that you really kind of, mm, okay, this is a standout feature. It's a nice sounding I am, doesn't offend anybody, but there's nothing really to stand out. This, the Quiet C, on the other hand, yes, it does have this mid bass bloat. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the top end is not exactly a, an example of linearity either. But the way that it comes across just makes it more engaging. It just makes it more fun. And you ultimately, at least I ultimately find myself going more times for the Quiet C than what I did for the Duno. I, I listened longer to the Quiet C than I did to the, to the Duno because it was just ultimately more gratifying, more satisfying. And you know, as this is all about the music, that's, that's the way it goes. Technically, maybe, okay, fine, the Duno comes out on top. I'm not gonna discuss that, obviously it does. But, uh, you know, it's uh, how much fun is it? Anyway, that's the Duno, so I've gotten that one out of the way. Let me see here, which is this one here. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, okay, yeah. So that's the Duno out of the way. Now I'm gonna show you the, the R2E3 with the black nozzle. That's the R2E3 with the black nozzle, so it's the nozzle which emphasizes more the the, the mids and and the and the, and, the, and the upper mids, okay. And this is the mermaid, but with the um, let me just change the color, sorry, with the silver nozzle, which is the nozzle that I like you or that I used and that I use more commonly. So you can see that with the black nozzle, a little bit less bass than the quiet C uh, and so that balance between the two extremes of the frequency makes it more makes it more intense in the upper mids and, and, and uh, highs and it just becomes more fatiguing to listen to while with the silver nozzle okay 
you have a base which is now more comparable to the base of the quiet sea and more balanced out with the highs that you have and overall the sound that comes across is very 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 similar they're very they trade blows they although graphically you wouldn't think so especially because of this area yeah you would think that the quiet sea would be a little bit more aggressive especially in this area around five no they, they trade very much blows and um yeah that's it okay um okay so that's mermaid out of the way now this is the zulaniao the z4 uh, very good execution in terms of the mids and upper mids and treble not out, but it's too thin so good complements to each other really good complement to each other uh, they will you know if you have one makes different sense getting the other um next one is the blonde the z300 uh, I ultimately still think that the blonde, although a little bit more linear in the mids, uh, it lacks a little bit of twinkles and sparkles that you get from uh, the Quiet Sea. So I would probably think that I would opt the, for the Quiet Sea over the blonde. Uh, yes, the, the base uh, on the blonde is fantastic. The mids are also very well done. But I just the balance of the, of the Quiet Sea just appeals more to me in this particular case. Um, Compared here now to the X1, uh, base-wise the X1 is phenomenal, but it just lacks too much energy uh, as opposed to the quiet scene, the uh, uh, upper mids and treble, and so it just sounds overall darker. It sounds not as detailed. Uh, neither of them are well, not neither of them are. I mean, the, the, in terms of detail retrieval, yes, fine. The the, the X as well, uh, the X1 is not not the best. Uh, the, the the quiet scene is far superior, um, but. You know, either of them uh, are not perfect, let's put it that way. Um, one is perhaps excessively colored, the other one excessively dark. Um, so again, I would say these are good complements to each other. Uh, you know, the, 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 what, what I believe the X1 needs is just a little bit more of a fine tuning the base to really make the whole thing just come across and, and shine. All right, uh, next one, the TKZK Oranos. Um, I think it very much speaks for themselves. Uh, the balance that the game is struck by the Oranos is very, very good. Uh, um, ultimately, maybe just the base of the of the of the Quiet Sea, just a little bit more intense, but not really the quality. It's just the quantity. Okay. Um, next one is the Jazir Clear. This is a base monster. Uh, um, you know, the, the the more correct and more versatile definitely will be the the um, the Quiet Sea. And, and having if you've got one it makes sense to buy the other honestly I do think you know if I think a little bit more calmly I do think it makes sense to if you got the clear it makes sense to get the quiet sea um, next one yeah is the ICO OH 300 um, a little bit more bassy than the than the, the, the quiet sea uh, mids upper mids and treble very identical actually although uh, it doesn't in some occasions it doesn't seem to be as detailed because of this extra amount of bass that you have as well so it's all about the balance that is struck between the two extremes of the frequency okay uh tension one well like i said tension one it just makes sense buying purely because of its price i mean in terms of the bass you think oh this is basically basically the same sort of bass and so on. no 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 it, it might be in terms of quality but the way it comes across the impact the the, the visceral amount of slam that the base on the on the on the quiet sea has is, is pretty impressive it is pretty impressive i mean it's definitely a very very good driver okay uh next one is the sim got the ea500 with the red nozzle um, this doesn't really um, showcase what the, the ea500 is capable i would say maybe just maybe 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 just a little bit extra base quantity but still uh, EF500 is a better IM it's a better IM um, next one is the the, the SIMCOT sorry the, the EPZ the Q5 my apologies um, very similar to what I just said uh, you know maybe a little bit more base uh, slam base quality um, uh, and definitely quantity as opposed to the Q5 but it's the balance of everything um, so I don't know I guess you could say side grades to each other Ultimately, uh, twelve uh, is uh, the wizard. Now it's the wizard. Uh, my apologies. Now it's the, no, sorry. This one. Yeah. Now this is the wizard. Uh, same situation is very much on the SIM card, the A five hundred. 
the, 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 the way that it's not really the base where you see the difference, it's just the way that this is done, where then when you start pushing the volume, you, you just find that the wizard just maintains itself composed for longer, it doesn't seem to be as on the limit, let's put it that way. Uh, but these are minor differences, people. I mean, seriously, minor, minor differences. And then compared here, yeah, finally, with the, uh, um, with the uh, Muse, let me just see. Um, I've shown you the do the do oh actually I haven't shown you the Dunokima sorry this is the Dunokima um, as you can see very similar all right okay that's the Dunokima and now compare them to the Muse the East Six um, there's two settings on the East Six there's a setting where um, you you have um, uh, which is the red nozzle which you have a little bit more energy and a setting which you have a little, a, a, a little bit smoother more more the pin again being later okay so with the pin with the more energy is this one here and the smoother pin is this one with the more energy um, the base is very equal there's really not much um, I guess it's because of that extra little bit that you have over here let me well let me just rewind let's let me just try and explain it in a different manner okay so we have a base gain of 66 to 76 or 10 dbs all right on the um, on the muse we have a base gain of 66 to 74 73 sorry so 7 dbs and then we have a gain, and then it carries on the gain for the peanut, for the upper, you know, the mids and so on, 6, 76, 10 dBs. So, that difference here, this difference here, is 3 dBs. The difference here on the mids on and to the base is slightly less. But the overall perception that you get on, on the balance of the base in, uh, in, the, in the quiet sea, and on the balance of the base and mids on the... Um, the, uh, the, um, the the East Six is that this peak, although it could represent a problem, and this peak, although that it could also represent a problem, is slightly tamed down by this extra amount of base that you have. Okay, so we have a difference of about three b three dBs of base. So what it means is that the quiet sea just comes across as being sonically or audibly or psychoacoustically more balanced out it's v-shaped yes but more balanced out when however i put the other nozzle which is the nozzle let me just change the color which is the nozzle the black one okay um there we go then that changes things that balance becomes almost identical as you can see between the base and the mids let me just quickly I mean, we're talking about a pinot on the base of 67 to 75, so 8 dBs and 8 dBs on the mids. That balance now that exists, it just makes the, the, the East 6 sound very, very nice. In this setup, if you can get a good seal, trust me, the East 6 is very competent. And in this setup, mixed with the Quiet Sea, it's a tough one to choose. It is a tough one to choose. Um, maybe a smidge more upper mids and treble um, but there's really really not that of a, a huge difference between the two of them it's a question of more of, of how polished one presents the mids and the treble and how polished the other one or how rough the other one represents it um, excellent excellent Tr truly ex in this setup very very good anyway guys this has been my review for the quiet sea and ultimately, I've just shown you as well the graphs of the of the um, Muse, um, uh, the East Six. Um, both are very competent IEMs. Both are very good IEMs. Their biggest problem is that they are competing in a in a in a, in a price bracket which is highly competitive, um, and it, it's just it's a hard one. It's it's truly a hard one. Just a final quick one that I wanted to actually just show you. If you guys understand better what I'm trying to say when I say it's comparable to the R2E3 Mermaid, I'm actually going to put the three of them together. Okay, that's the three of them together. All right, and you could say these three together, 
you, these are very similar sounding. That's the, the reality. They all have a very similar style of bass. The same kind of slight roll off uh, around 40 hertz. Um, the same sort of mid bass energy. The same sort of peak with just different varying levels of, of intensity. Okay, the R2, E3, the Mermaid, it's kind of the in-between of the other two, all right? Where the, the R2, E3 uh, is able to uh, put itself at the level that it doesn't reach that point of being aggressive or harsh. Um, the, uh, the, the East 6 keeps that a little bit tamer, a little bit, a little bit less uh, energy, but still very well done. And the e, the quiet C is the one that pushes that a little bit more, but somehow, and, and I, it's it's definitely down to the fact that you have that amount of energy from the bass coming from behind. It just manages to keep its balance very nice. So the three of them, they sound very very good. Uh, you know, if you have a mermaid, it doesn't buy, it doesn't make sense buying the, either two of them. It doesn't uh, because that's just the way it is. If you have a quiet C, does it make sense buying the other two as well? No. If you have the E6, does it make sense to buy the other two? No, it's only if the, the fit isn't good. So there you have it, guys. Three, you know, the, these two IMs are very competent. Uh, they they're really good. Uh, you know, they just are in the price bracket, which is difficult. That's it. End of story. No, nothing more I can say. All right. Anyway, guys, as always, like and subscribe. Forgive me for the length of the reviews, but you know I am, and also with this many with this many IEMs to try and compare, it's never easy to keep things down. Okay, take care now, bye-bye.